Kylie Cox, known online as Sketch or the Sketch Reel, was previously an LGBTQ plus adult content creator. He used names like Jamie Marr HTXXX, Jamie Marr TX, Jamie Marr NSFW, and Jamie's Code Tour to create and promote content on places like OnlyFans, as well as X, formerly known as Twitter. This video was awkward to write, and it was just as awkward to put images together for and edit. I'm positive that awkwardness will translate into the viewing experience, so I appreciate you for watching and sharing if you see fit. I also want to add all the information and visuals are sourced from public content sites like OF, like Reddit, like X. None of this was pulled from Kylie Cox's personal life or personal data. This was all things that Kylie created and shared in his previous attempt to become internet famous prior to his content creation under the moniker of Sketch. I sat on this story for a couple of weeks. I was unsure if, if I really needed to create it and share it with the world. However, I did go to school for journalism. In NJ school, they taught us if a story meets the standards of timeliness, proximity, interest, controversy, sensationalism, prominence, and novelty, according to Shoemaker et al. 1987, it is newsworthy and it needs to be shared with the public. For those of us unfamiliar with Kylie Cox, he's a native Houstonian and Texan who once upon a time played linebacker at the Woodlands Christian Academy. He's a member of the Kappa Sigma fraternity at Mississippi State University. He later transferred to the University of Oklahoma, then Texas State, and Lone Star College before ultimately deciding academics was not for him. At some point in 2023, Cox created the character Sketch and started to live stream himself playing Madden NFL on TikTok. He did this for a few months, and then one day, overnight seemingly, his catchphrase, what's up brother, went viral and made him a sensation. Since then, 2024 has been a major year for Kylie Cox. He's partnered with people like the Houston Texans, Kai Sinat and AMP, Fortnite, Jinxie, other sports teams like the Dallas Mavericks, Tennessee Titans, and March Madness, and other people have been seen doing his What's Up Brother emote, if you will, uh, the likes of Bryce Harper, Johan Rojas, Bo Naylor, Kyle Tucker, just to name a few. But really, many of us only know that sketch. We only know the sketch from 2023. And in recent interviews, Kylie has said that prior to becoming Sketch, all he did was work with his family in their real estate business from 2020 to 2023. That could be part of the story, but we will uncover it is not the full story. For those of you unfamiliar with my channel, I love to connect popular media with old school philosophy or even new school philosophy. Most times I'll watch a movie, read a book or watch a TikTok and then see what's the underlying belief system in that TikTok and create a nice video about it. I wanted my next video, this video, to be about sketch. He's very popular. For the algorithm's sake, people will likely see a sketch thumbnail and click on it. However, in doing my research for Sketch's personal belief system, I ran across the comment from user Red Warfus on Instagram, who suggested Googling Jamie Marr HTXXX and Jamie Marr NSFW to quote see Sketch in his true form, with the warning that there was graphic content to be seen. In doing this, I discovered that before Sketch, Kylie Cox led a life of an LGBTQ plus adult content creator known as Jamie Marr HTXXX, as well as the several other monikers related to it. I understand that that is a very serious claim that, again, can have very huge implications on his future. So, yes, we want to be certain that this person, Jamie Marr HTXXX, is Kylie Cox, who is Sketch. I mean, at the very base level, if you just look at the name, Jamie Marr HTXXX, 
or Jamie Mar TX that would indicate to us that this person is in the Texas area, specifically Houston, which we know for a fact is where Kylie Cox, aka Sketch, resides at as well. When we follow that name to Reddit, we get more confirmation that this person is indeed in Houston because in 2021, they posted several times looking for Houston area meetups. They also posted a handful of times promoting their content on Twitter. Now, when you follow the link to Twitter, fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to slice this, the account has been scrubbed from the internet. In fact, most things associated with Jamie Marr have been scrubbed for the internet, or at least attempted to have been scrubbed from the internet. Still, things remain. Things like a video in 2022 from Big DJ, who features Jamie Marr HTXXX. And looking at the screenshot here, we can see this person very closely resembles Kylie Cox or Sketch. I mean, most of which are, we're going to have to just go off visuals and referencing Jamie Marr, Kylie Cox, and Sketch. But I do believe that is more than enough, especially paired with the fact that this character is in Houston, Texas, sketches in Houston, Texas. A lot of his things are adding up. Most of the video content is way too explicit to share here on YouTube, so we can't go through it. However, I do suggest you do the research yourself. A quick search will pull up exactly what you're looking for. One thing I can show is very edited down pictures, uh, the likes of which, one, show Jamie Marr wearing very distinctive blue rectangular glasses which are identical to the ones that Sketch often wears, even as recently as uh, a month or so ago. Again, most of it's cut out in this picture, but we can see the bottom of the rectangular frames that are blue, and then the arms being a distinctive brown, perhaps a black color. Again, cross-reference with other pictures of Sketch. Those are the exact same glasses. Now, yes, people often have the same glasses, or at least the same um, aura of glasses, but blue rectangular flame frames with colored arms is very unique. And connecting that with, you know, the, the very unique look of Sketch in the hometown of Sketch, in the hometown of Jamie Marr, it's hard to chalk that up as coincidence only. Similarly, we have Jamie Marr wearing um, black wireframe glasses and a hairstyle that's also very similar to Sketch, a.k.a. Kylie Cox. So this is now two ways to connect Jamie Marr and Kylie Cox. The blue rectangular glasses, the black wireframe glasses, paired with the location-based matchmaking. It's very hard to just chalk that up as coincidence and maybe just so happens Jamie Marr lives in the same place and wears the same glasses and hairstyle as Kylie Cox. This is really all that I can share on YouTube without getting entirely too graphic and again just, you know, getting my video taken down and defeating the whole purpose of this. I will likely share more evidence on Reddit or honestly just Google Jamie Mar HTXXX yourself and you'll see. It's really not that that hard to find if you know where to look. After this is really where I kind of got tripped up when I was thinking about how to write about this and, and create a video because I thought to myself, is all that I really have to say that Kylie Cox initially started out as a adult content creator? That's not super duper exciting. Yes, it's breaking news. It's new information. But how does that really bolster the channel that I'm trying to create here and, and telling a story of history and, and philosophy attached to these pop cultural events and icons? So I had to do some research. I, I, I thought to myself, why is it that ex-workers are always directly linked to the entertainment industry, the theatric industry? Why do they always transition back and forth so easily? Is this just a 21st century thing? Is this the rise of TikTok and OF and Linktree? Is that what really has gotten us here? Is it Instagram's fault? Um, and in researching, I found that, I mean, the, the two have always been linked together inescapably. 
if we go back to ancient Rome, the connection isn't super duper clear, but they are definitely in the same social status, right? Most oftentimes, actors, ex-workers were slaves in servitude to the people of ancient Rome and ancient Greece. At the time, both things were disapproved, especially acting, because Plato thought that this was deceitful. This was a person pretending to be someone else, and that was morally wrong. Because of that, that was disapproved, especially because they knew that as a slave, they were doing much more than just acting on a stage in front of the town. The connection gets overwhelmingly clear when you go to China in the 13th century, where they're not slaves, they're free willing participants who are going town to town, acting and spreading entertainment. The issue is, this is prior to people really understanding the value of that. This is pre-TikTok, this is pre-Twitch, pre-YouTube, pre-Hollywood, right? There's no understanding that they are providing a genuine service that could be appreciated by everyone. So, them acting town to town was also them selling themselves town to town because after they got off stage, they'd interact with townspeople, come to agreements, and perform acts that adults perform together to support their lifestyle and make it to the next town so they could do the same thing there and then in the next town and the next town and so on and so forth. So again, we now have the pairing of theatrics, entertainment being directly tied to X work. Then along comes Kabuki in Japan and this time the connection between the two is right in everyone's face. It is very clear that the kabuki actors are going to perform acts for people that have the money to patron patronage them and support their, their troupe. Again, making this connection inescapable for all of us. Over time, this does shift a little bit, especially once we get into the 18th and 19th century. Now, the wealthy kind of understand this connection between theatrics, entertainment, and X work. And so they try to clean it up a bit, right? They now want the actors for themselves, but they don't want the commoner to know that that's what they're um, doing with this, with this actor. And so it gets hidden a little bit. We don't understand that, oh, this actor is supporting themselves through a different kind of thing. And this kind of goes on from 18th and 19th century all the way up into the 21st. Then once you get to the 20th and 21st century, it's almost, um, there, there is very small amount of um, X work being performed by the actors, and most of it is just truly high-class people patronaging them and, and supporting their arts. But now, I think in the 21st century, we are circling back to that original deep and inescapable connection between X work and entertainment work. Um, and I think that you see that happen with people like Sketch so easily transitioning from Jamie Marr into Sketch and likely back to Jamie Marr behind the scenes um, for the people that are supporting him. I you know, don't want to point fingers or make accusations about people, but you know, whenever there is large amounts of money being exchanged, we've learned through the Me Too movement and things of the likes that typically um, that comes with some sort of... Um, eye for an eye kind of thing, or you scratch my back, I'll, I'll scratch your back, or, or vice versa. So there's that. Um, this is not new. This is not a phenomenon created by Jamie Marr and Sketch and Kylie Cox. This is something intrinsic to the world that he found himself drawn to. And whether he knew it or not, he understood the philosophy of this world. He understood what the world asked of him, and he gave it to them. And we see the um, benefits and successes that you can draw from doing the thing that is required of you, um, for lack of a better term. It's very hard to talk about this um, under the censorship of our good old-fashioned media overlords. But with that, I leave you to make your own decisions and, and thoughts and feelings about this information that I've shared today. I am very interested interested to see how to sketch respond to the resurfacing of Jamie Marr. Perhaps I am over-exaggerating the importance of my video. Perhaps 
it will reach the same 300 people that it always does and it actually won't read sketch and, and he won't have to address these um, things but if it does I would like to see how does how do how do people respond to this I think we've seen in previous years being LGBTQ plus is not a career ender that it used to be and so I feel a little bit comfortable in, in sharing this knowing that I mean um, I think to situations like Isaiah Rashad where a similar kind of revelation happened and most people leaned into him and, and, and supported him. And so I would love to see the same thing happen for uh, Kylie Cox. And in fact, I would love to see Kylie Cox actually stand on this and um, use it as a, as a learning experience, a teaching experience, a way to enrich and deepen his um, presence online and his, his partnerships. And I'd love to see how his partnerships respond. You know, do the Texans continue to lean in, in, into him? Do Kai Sinat and AMP continue to lean into him? Will Fortnite lean into him? Or will we all shy away and, and say this is um, not brand safe? Um, I guess time will tell. With that, again, I have to, um, I want to caveat the way that I started this. This is not about shaming Kylie. He has the right to live his life. Um, and he was a consenting adult with other consenting adults, so no one was hurt or harmed. But I do think that it is very important for online personalities to share things that they did online previously. Um, and, and I suppose they don't have to, but most times their previous life gets resurfaced and, and we have to talk about it, right? In conclusion, Kylie's journey from Jamie to Sketch mirrors the historical path that most actors took um, from social outcast to celebrity. And this is just the nature of online personas and how to navigate it. Hopefully from this we can learn how to explore your past digital identity and your new digital identity in this age of entertainment and online service. What do you think about Sketch's past? Does it matter? How do we approach this issue? Let me know in the comments. Um, and again, I, I, I want to emphasize, let's treat both him, myself, anyone he worked with, anyone he may work with, with kindness, understanding, grace, and sensitivity. Thank you for watching.